Hey guys, what's up? Cyrus back with Crafty Bastard Games. I wanted to do a brief tutorial uh, on a dungeon setting that I've been doing out of Styrofoam. The problem is I decided to do a tutorial after I was about halfway done. So instead of going back to the beginning, I'm just going to show you a little bit about what I've made so far and give you a couple of steps of how to do it. First of all, you're going to hear a lot more in future videos about me using scrap styrofoam. This is a piece that I got from work. You can see little finger holes here, and that is what became this floor piece. You can kind of see the dimensions, how it fits in there. But I also bought some polystyrene, some styrofoam, that came in these larger sheets that are just a little over one foot and then four feet long. I think I got six pieces for all about ten bucks. So a lot of styrofoam for really cheap, but it's kind of the dirty kind. It even has these striations and the way it was made that can be used to your advantage when doing stone in particular. So for flooring or for walls. But for now we'll use this smaller piece as a demonstration. So what I did is, here's that first piece, and I just simply drew onto the styrofoam with a marker and ruler, just did the grid lines across. I got the basic size of it that I needed. So here, this is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 17 across by about nine or 10 deep. And so I did this on graph paper first as well. I, I find that the planning phases of these kinds of things are much easier sorted out, and so you're not wasting as much styrofoam if you know about where you want to go. So you can already see from the first drawing to what I ended up doing, it's a little different. The, the top stairwells are different. That stairway became an archway. Even the front, I was going to do a double entrance, but I made it back into a single entrance, and so on. So this is a way I could map out generally what it would look like. So you can kind of see the, the end effect here with the wall, stairs going up, wall, stairs going up. So then after I had drawn everything out, got the basic size of everything, uh, then it was time to take an X-Acto knife and I just simply carved very lightly at an angle into the recesses all the way across and then going back the other direction. And then just with you know the back end of a paintbrush, I was able to uh, just kind of clean it all out. Then go the opposite direction, and there you go. So I've done that before in just some, uh, where is it? Just a basic piece. And there's another one that I have in the other room that I've painted to look like stone. But you can kind of see, just stand alone as a dungeon tile. Looks pretty good. See, it's scrap styrofoam. Just whatever I had laying around. And then it began uh, time to glue everything together. So I did separate pieces for each floor. Then I carved out the stairs, just with an X-Acto knife. Put the floor down here, these stairs. Then I wanted to make big archways. And of course, as soon as I want my demonstration arch, it's missing. <laughs> but either way, you can see these arches were also just gridded up. I got the basics. I want them about two inches wide by three inches tall for the clearance so the figurines can fit through. Let me take one of these these guys. So even when they're standing under it, here, the size makes sense. Kind of a big doorway, but if this is an old castle or fort of some kind, then it's going to be a little bit bigger. It's going to be very strong, very sturdy. See him right there. 
Same thing with a smaller one here. So still three inches tall, but only one inch wide. So a, a more narrow entryway. And then this took a bit of rigging just to figure out. Had to cut here and here and then the angles and back in. But what's neat about styrofoam like this is you're going to get a weathered, worn down texture no matter what. Like this area has not been textured very much. Just very little with my fingernails. But for the most part, that's kind of what it came out like. So if you wanted a cleaner look, you'd probably have to go a different route or a different kind of styrofoam. But you can see everything here so far is the same kind of styrofoam. All of this is just glued together. I didn't use hot glue because hot glue tends to melt it much faster. And I use the, I've heard it pronounced Eileen's, Aileen's, Aileen's, Tacky glue. This is great because it's a lot like Elmer's PVC glue, all purpose adhesive, but it's a little gunkier, it's a little stickier. So you get more, um, a, a, it's almost like they magnetize together a little bit better. So once you glue it and you rub it together, you get a lot of glue in between the recesses and hold it, it'll hold in place. Whereas the white, regular white glue, after a while, if it's heavy, it'll just fall off to the side and you'd have to do one piece at a time this i was able to glue together in big sections at a time so the entire back wall then that back corner and wall that back corner and wall this front corner and then the front archway so you can even see in here i made some errors in judgment when it came to thickness because let's go top down the same thickness of the styrofoam, the arch wouldn't look good, so I had to bevel the edge in here, just as I did there. And so that's the importance of doing something like this. You can minimize some of your errors and your piece will be more solid and sturdy in the end, but you'll still probably make a few mistakes and that's okay because this is foreign architecture. You're making this stuff up as you go along. So what I tried to do is actually give about an eighth of an inch on each side just to push the walls back a little bit even back here but also so I could put some rubble so the rubble doesn't encroach the space of the square if I put more back in the areas there but you can see I kind of forgot it along that wall there and on the inside wall there so not a big deal I do have it on the inside there not really on the inside here. So what's next? Well, you might notice the round nature of the arches, and I did that with a styrofoam. I call it a styrofoam wand. It's a styro cutter. Can you plug in? Gets super super hot and just melts through the styrofoam. But you have to do this outside or in a very very well vented area, ventilated area. And I like to use this room as my workstation. The problem is it's indoors, so I have to open up the windows, turn on fans, open the door to the hallway, and that's pretty loud and kind of difficult to record a video with. So what I'm going to do is do some of that and just speed up the process from the camera's point of view so you can kind of see how I'm going to weather and cut out some of the, the final pieces. So be back with that in just a few minutes and tell you a little bit more about what I've done.